Good evening, everyone. I'm really happy to, to see you joining us today, although it's, it's a big holiday in, in, in the year, so it's like Eid holiday and Eid Mubarak to all of you. I hope you already had enjoyed the last few days. And um, many thanks again for joining us. And I, I'll try my best to, to make it very easy like uh, and, and, and very short session. Uh, and then we will finalize the things related to the logical framework uh, by next week. So, so uh, this week we will try to, to focus more on the objectives which is usually a nice uh, part of the training. And also uh, we, will, we will talk about some, something related to the logical framework. So thank you so much uh, for breaking your holiday and coming to the session. I will I will share with you the the presentation and we will go on. Uh, so now we are on the second session of the proposal writing training, uh, which is going to be uh, about project objectives and logical framework. The first part will be mainly about project objectives, and. Before we go to the objectives, I will always uh, like advise you to, to continue asking why. Because usually when you ask why, you will discover the reasons. And the reasons beyond everything is the objective, actually. So, so we, we always ask why in everything you do. Uh, the objectives of, of today's session is, is that I expect that you will all be able to develop the project smart objectives. And also not only the project smart uh, objectives, but also you will um, hopefully you will be able to, to develop objectives for your life, for your career in general, for your personal um, uh, development and so on. Uh, you will also uh, learn a little bit more about uh, theory of change of the project. Of course, we, we talked about the theory of change and what it means and how it could, uh, uh, it makes like the relations um, of, of the different parts of the programs. Also, this is similar in the project. We will also uh, learn how to develop all parts of the logical framework outcomes, outputs, indicators, targets, verification methods, and activities. And as, as I mentioned, the, the objective number three is related to the logical framework, and we will talk a lot about it next week, not, not this week. Uh, this week, we will, we will uh, focus mainly about the, the logic model itself. Um, and we will, we will start by talking about the main terms that are used today. Uh, and the logical framework is usually a planning matrix that summarize the project objectives, results, intended activities, what indicators will be used to measure the progress and results. The look frame is sometimes used instead of logical framework. So you will find some donors who will, who will say look frame, not logical framework. It's still the same, it's just another name for the logical framework. While the theory of change is the diagram of the logical framework. The only difference between the theory of change and the logical framework is that the theory of change uh, is, is giving you an idea of the relations between the different parts. For example, um, for example, like two inputs will 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 feed into one output. Uh, while the logical framework is usually uh, having, um, it's like for example, one input should should come up with output. For example, we will talk more uh, on the following slide. Uh, but mainly, like these are the main terms for today. Um, from the from last week, we took that these are the different parts of the proposals, and and the last week we talked about the proposal cover, the background, the project justification, and today we will focus mainly on the project uh, project objectives and a little bit on the logical framework. So now we are on on our at the, this part. Project objectives, you will always listen to or read about SMART objectives. 
And just to give you an idea, um, the, the objective, the objective has many, like many criteria. Uh, to be a smart objective is just one of the criteria, but it also uh, need to start with, with the verb that show increase or decrease in something, like improve, decrease, decrease, uh, like uh, increase, decrease, reduce. It should answer the question why to uh, increase, like for example, when we, when we answer why, We'll see to increase to reduce. Uh, it should also use the verb in the present tense, not um, not the past or the future. Um, we will talk more about the first criteria, which is the smart objective. The smart objective, smart actually mean uh, it's like abbreviation for for these words. For so S is specific, M is measurable, A achievable, R is relevant, T time. There are others who have like like different um, names, but the same abbreviation. For example, um, sometimes for the M is not just for measurable; it could be for manageable. So the objective should be something we can measure, but also should be something we can manage. If it's bigger than we can manage, then that's not an objective. Uh, the A could be for achievable; it could be for attainable or applicable. So the objective should be applicable, something we can do it, something we can achieve it. Uh, the R sometimes is also not only for relevant, it could be reliable or realistic. So some, some donors or some others, they might talk about the objective uh, as something that should be realistic, but also it should be relevant to the problem. If, the, if we have a problem, then the objective is, is to answer or to have a solution for the problem. So it should be relevant to what we are trying to achieve. Uh, a T is to be time. The, the objective is usually uh, related to time. Why you should always consider writing smart objectives? Because it makes you like it makes you more like any any uh, smart objective will make you more um, um, not only more smart but also you will be more motivated and more uh, able to, to measure that you are able to achieve or not. That's one thing. You will be more committed to, to the achieving the objective. Uh, but also, uh, the donors, when they, when they review the proposal, usually they have, um, they are putting, um, let's say, at least out of 100, uh, if, if, they are, if they are having 100 uh, uh, marks, for the whole proposal, then at least five marks, five out of 100 is, is given for smart objectives. And it's usually very easy to, to develop smart objectives. It, it needs more practice to be able to write the right smart objectives. I will give you some examples uh, for, uh, for the smart objectives. Uh, there are people who, who say that you could write smart object objectives only for the specific objectives. But the main objectives, uh, or the main objective, or the general objective, could could uh, should not be uh, smart. But this is wrong. Like what I advise you is that whenever the donor is asking about an objective, you should make it smart. Whether it's main objective, general objective, specific objective, whatever the name of the objective, it still needs to be smart. Why? Because the donor, I mean, or the evaluation committee will just look for objective. They don't care if it's mean, general, or specific. They, they never care what kind of uh, objective. Uh, I still remember when I was attending uh, with donors and evaluating some uh, uh, proposals. Usually, we, were, we, we have very few time. Like, for example, we could have just one minute to evaluate if the proposal is done in the right way or not. Sometimes five minutes for, for a single proposal. So how long are we going to spend on reviewing the project objective? I think we, we take maybe, let's say, 20 seconds or 30 seconds just to look at uh, the project objectives. And what we look for is to make sure that it's, it's smart, it's specific, measurable, achievable, applicable, and time. That's why it's, as long as it's easy to do, then you need to practice a lot to make sure that every time you write a project objective, you will do it uh, as smart as possible. And believe me, it's easy, but you need to practice more and more. Uh, 
um, and and so yeah so so in general we have two types the mean or general and the specific objectives we we have here the slide is talking about the problems and uh, how the problems should be reflected into objectives so for example we the, the last week we talked about the problems analysis using problems three and usually you will find out that as part of this problem three, the mean problem should be reflected to mean objective. So the mean problem should become the mean objective of the project. For example, if the mean objective, uh, of, if the mean problem was the difficulty in enrollment of 4,500 children to primary schools in Palanga City during the school year of 2020-2021. This is a, 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 the main problem of the project, and it was part of the analysis of the, the proposal. So if this is the main problem, if you will see that how we reflected it and we made it as a main objective or like the, main, the, the general objective of the project. So we will make it to increase. As we mentioned, one of, one of the criteria is to make sure that uh, the objective starts with a verb that show an increase or decrease. Uh, so we will go back to see that we see to increase the enrollment of 4,500, those who have the problem, children to primary schools in Balanga City in school year 2020-2021. So the main problem will become the main objective of the project. And then we mentioned the last week that the, there are problem the problem of uh, like uh, involved groups are involved in the problem for example family and uh, communities and here it could be like teachers here could be uh, let's say the, the school uh, the buildings the school the seats and everything so we will have an objective for every part of the problem uh, for every group or every factor that is contributing to the main problem then we have a specific objective to solve it, to, to make it uh, like, uh, to have a solution for that. So the first of the specific objective, the second and the third. For example, if the families uh, are uh, or have uh, low awareness of the importance of education, then the specific objective would be to improve the awareness of families on the importance of education. So, so we need to focus more on how, how, the, pro, how the problem uh, is reflected into the objective. And this is what is called logic model. The log it should be like there should be a logical uh, sequence from the problem to the objectives. And this is also applied for all the different parts of the lo logical framework. I, I give here some examples. For example, we say to increase the access of 10,000 children uh 50 5000 boys uh 5000 girls so it's it's better if we if we divided how many boys and girls this is usually uh like donors like it a lot when we divide the numbers not only by when we see children no they need to see boys and girls so to increase the access of 10000 children to primary schools in Clybeda county during the school year of 2021 2020 uh 2020-2021. I'm using like the names of, of uh, Lithuanian cities because we are in Lithuania and we become very very familiar with these names. So we like when we when we show the names, it's just an example. So please ignore it and and replace the, the name of the targeted locations you are working on. Um, here is another example. Just just want you to 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 see is that. Is this objective specific? Is it smart? Is it specific? Is it measurable? Is it applicable? Is it um, time? So when we say, is it specific? Yes, we are talking about the access of children to primary school. So it's very specific topic, access of children to the primary schools. And Klaibida, also, also it's specific in terms of place. So specific in terms of number of children, specific in terms of topic that uh, access of children to primary school and also specific in terms of uh, the location it's in Clybida County not everywhere also 
Uh, it's measurable. Uh, so we took about 10,000 children. And now, because it's measurable, you can say that we, we could achieve it at the end or not. So it's measurable, achievable, because the number is still not so big if the project has enough budget and enough time. And also, uh, during the school year, now it's time bound. So there is a time, 2021, 2020, uh, 2021 and 2020 school year. So it's like during one year. Uh, this is a kind of smart objective. We can, we can also see this, the second objective, to improve the capacity of 16 health service providers on integrated management of childhood illnesses, IMCI, in uh, Snibiskis district in 2021. If you see, if you try to find that it's smart or not, you will find out that also we started with a, a verb that shows increase or decrease, so we said to improve. Also, we are answering why. Why, why are we conducting this project? We are conducting this project to improve the capacity of 16 health service providers on integrated management of childhood illnesses. So it's a, spe a specific topic, uh, specific uh, area, um, and also it's measurable. Uh, it's achievable because the number is not, not so big and also it has one year period, so it's time uh, length. So it's, this is a smart objective. The third, the third one is, is to increase. Uh, so to increase is starting with a verb that increase or decrease, so this is increase. The access of 300 internally displaced people or IDBs to emergency shelter assistance. So it's specific to emergency shelter assistance. Uh, and also it's measurable. Also, this is specific in terms of uh, the town of Ma'arrat and Nu'man. For 12 months, this is linked uh, to time. So it's time and also this is applicable. So this is a, another um, smart objective. Uh, the fourth one is to increase. Why are we doing this? I will answer this is, we are doing this in order to increase the access of 700,000, uh, the access, uh, sorry, to increase the access of 700 households means families. So to increase the access uh, of 700 families in suburban areas of Vilnius city to livelihoods, uh, activities by the end of 2023. So this project has, for example, from now three years, and uh, it's measurable uh, with 700 households. Uh, it's specific in terms of livelihoods, activities, and also in suburban areas of Vilnius city. It's time bound for, for three years. The last uh, example, hopefully that they will be enough to, to show you how to uh, work on these. So for example, to improve the awareness of 100, uh, uh, to improve the awareness of 1,500 students, hope it would be much better if we say, for example, how many girls and how many boys in brackets. On the right ways to deal with strange and explosive objects in Eden City by the end of July 2020. Uh, so, for example, this is a kind of protection. We use it for protection uh, uh, projects. So, uh, the, to improve or do, to, increase, to increase or to decrease, so to improve the awareness, it's specific. Uh, it's measurable 1,500 1, students. And we, we are talking about uh, sub or, uh, explosive subordinates, and this is usually part of protection uh, projects. It's specific, uh, as we mentioned, it's in Eden, or we could use another city uh, by the end of July 2020. So, um, for example, this is an objective for education. This is an example for, for health. This is an example for shelter. Another example for health, uh, I mean, for livelihoods, and this one for protection, or also could be for education. So we, you could use like a, a smart objectives for all types of uh, projects or sectors or programs. Um, uh, I would, I, I will be happy if, if you could give me like an example. For example, you could, you could write an uh, a smart objective here uh, on in the comment. I could comment on them if they are smart or not. Just put in your mind that 
it, it starts with uh, a verb that shows increase or decrease. It should be in present tense. Um, it should answer the question why. Also, it should um, um, it should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, applicable, and time. Uh, just to give you an idea, for example, when we ask uh, many, many other, uh, like for example, when we do some uh, practices, um, usually I ask them to give me some, some objectives and some of them, for example, they would say that my objective is to travel to Canada. If, if you compare this, is this an objective? I'm sure many of you will think it's objective or, or many people will think that it's an objective, while it's not. Because when we say, if, if your objective is to travel to Canada, I will ask you, why are you, tra I, uh, why are you uh, like planning to travel to Canada? Why do you want to go to Canada? If you answer why, then that's the objective. Because now what you answered is what? So this is the difference between why and what. So if I'm, if I'm asking, what are you planning to do? You will say, I'm planning to go to Canada. Um, uh, so it's like an activity. This is the difference between the activity and an objective. The activity says, I want to go to Canada. I, 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 I hope I could go to Canada or USA or Europe. Or I, uh, some others would say, my objective is to is to uh, graduate from uh, or is to study a master degree. Is this an objective? For sure, it's not an objective. It's it's a task. It's an activity. Because why are you studying the master degree? It's it might be uh, to increase my income or to uh, have more many more opportunities uh, uh, in in job uh, like. In, and job creation and I mean you, you, there is always a reason why do you want to study a master degree or why do you want to go to Canada so you need to answer why so that you will be able to 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 answer uh, or to develop the objective um, I will go to the comments and find out uh, if, if you already like have some uh, no one has uh, developed an objective so that's fine um, uh, you still have the chance to to have your objectives here or also as we mentioned we uh, we will be happy if you if you are able to uh, if you are uh, able to join the the portal uh, group and let me show you as we mentioned the last week because some of you didn't uh, participate so please uh, as as i mentioned this is this is a, a group of the training. So we created programs called Programs Managers Training, Batch 1. So uh, please uh, try to register in this account. And then you, you will find that uh, uh, you, you will be able to, to access. So for example, let's say, yes, we already have like two, uh, we have already two propo uh, proposals developed uh, or uh, started by by uh, participants. Thank you so much. This is very helpful, and I will I will be waiting for every one of you to join us on this group. Uh, we already sent you um, an invitation. I think the invitation was was on Tuesday, 28th of uh, of uh, July. So to the 28th of July. We sent you an email inviting you to join us on, on a Portal 365 training group. And here we will, we will be happy to see you uh, creating proposals. So we could give you a feedback for, for every part of the proposal. For example, here you will find that uh, this is one of the participants. Uh, and also um, they already, uh, they, they are working on the background. And then we will have a logical framework. In the, logical, in the logical framework, we will have project objectives. As you can see here, I cannot add any objective because I'm not allowed, because I'm not, I don't have the authority to join the group or to join the team. They need to add me to uh, as a responsible. Uh, so uh, please, uh, I, I, I will need uh, every one of you 
to add me to uh, to the uh, for example here to add me to you here i can't add myself even if i am the admin uh, so please add me as a person in charge for example here I, the, there are users in charge i can add anybody because i am the i am the one who created this uh, project uh, but for the other projects i cannot i cannot add myself so please add add yourself to uh, i mean add me to the add me so i can i can comment and i can give you feedback uh, yes that's uh, that's one thing uh, I will give you feedback for every part of the proposal, step by step. So here we have Abdullah who already uh, created a project and, uh, and started writing the proposal. Okay, um, so that's, that's just a reminder. So please uh, uh, add yourself to the, to the group. And also, if you if you were not able to to add yourself please talk to me on linkedin and we can see if you received the invitation or not uh, so we can uh, add you again uh, okay uh, i will share the presentation again um, so we can talk about uh, the first assignment for the first part of the training um, so yes, it was it was to activate the account in Portal Batch One training, uh, and to start adding proposal and also add your smart objectives. Uh, as I mentioned, um, um, as I mentioned before, uh, unfortunately, uh, not all of you already joined. That's why, uh, um, and because of course uh, you you were all in public holiday due to age. Um, so I will we will give you more more time uh, from like this week and by next week, and hopefully all of us will be in, on the same group trying to share what we have achieved and what we are developing uh, in the proposal. Uh, this is the first part of today's uh, training. I will go to the second part, but I will not talk a lot. It's just to give you more time to think about it, so we can explain on, and go on detail and give more exa examples by next week. Uh, so we will go to the logical framework and how it's uh, developed. We talked the last week about the problem tree and how we do the analysis. The mean problem here, the problem position, the mean causes. We have the effects on involved groups and harms on direct beneficiaries and impact on society. And how we reflected the, the problem tree into this diagram uh, where we have this mean problem we have the position of the problem or the the mean factors that that came up of the problem and also the causes the the direct effects the the harms and also the impact and then uh, i was i was uh, uh, mentioning this we mentioned that always the beneficiaries are always the heart of all what we do so the beneficiaries here will be related to the outcome when we when we write the outcome it should be uh, related to the beneficiaries and also the families and communities where the target group number one the first level that have direct effect on beneficiaries so we will make them output one the service providers will be the 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 uh, i mean the level number two so they will be target group number two and also the output number two the service Facilities, for example, schools and, and um, for example, health facilities, hospitals, so on, uh, will be the third level. Uh, so it will be the target group or target factor three, and then we, we, it will become the output number three. Also, if we are talking about the fourth level, then we will have the target group number four and the output number four. So it depends on the levels that we are targeting in the proposal, we will meet uh, the outputs. What my advice is, is try to limit your outputs to only three outputs in, in humanitarian projects. If it's development project, then you could add uh, a fourth outputs. You could add uh, maybe five or six outputs. But you just, just make uh, sure in mind that Usually, and this is a normal practice, even the biggest donors, they, they have only, uh, they only prefer to have not more than six outputs. 
I advise you to not add more than three and four is, is the maximum output you need to add for a single proposal. And only uh, one outcome. So you can add only one outcome and three outputs or four outputs. This is more than enough for a logical framework, especially if the project is not so big. If the project is, is having a budget more than $1 million, maybe $3 million, the huge projects that are funded by USAID, uh, UK aid or DFID, Department for International Development, uh, Swedish International Development Agency, uh, Danida, Danish International Development Agencies. I mean, these, these big uh, donor agencies, if you are developing a project for them that is huge, and that is more than $1 million project, then you could add more than one outcome and you could add to six out, outputs. But if it's less than that, for example, if the project is $200,000, then it would be much better to have three to four maximum outputs and single well-developed outcome. Um, that's that's my, uh, my advice. This is also applied to the objectives. You, you could add only one general objective and three specific objectives, and these are more than enough. Okay, um, another uh, idea just uh, to clarify more, we, we talked about the, the problem three and that it has the main problem, the involved parties, the effects on different parties, and the damage, the impact, and then the main causes that are that are linked to every uh, involved group or factor. This is reflected to the theory of change. If we, if we are talking about the theory of change of a project, it should be like the, the, the opposite reflection of the problem three. So for example, the main problem, as we mentioned uh, in the first part of the session, the main problem will become main objective. Uh, for this, like in first involved groups or factors could be the first specific objective, the same for this, and the same for, for the third specific objective. So these are the objectives of, of the, uh, the proposals or the project. And then you will link every activity to the same objective. So for example, these are uh, activities related to specific objective number one, or, the, or I mean for a first specific objective. And these activities are linked to second specific objective, and these activities are linked to third specific objective. These are all linked to third output and the same linked to second output, the same are uh, linked to first outcome. And also, if you, if you could see that all of them are sharing the same objective uh, and they could be linked together in, in any way, and then the, the three outputs will feed into one outcome, and the outcome, if it, if, it, if it was achieved, then we will have the impact at the level of the community. Uh, when we see indicators, uh, we, we were talking the last week about like having questions for every part of the, the problems tree that helps us to do the needs assessment. Also, we will need uh, questions. We will need these questions. They will, be, they will become indicators. And we need to have indicator for every part of the, the, uh, the, the logical framework. So if we have an impact, then we will need indicator for the impact. If we have the uh, outcome, we will need indicator for that. We, we need indicator for every output we add. Um, uh, also, we need indicators that measure the process uh, inputs or activities. And I will show you uh, a, a, a more clear example. We, in the second session, we talked about the theory of change of the programs and how we develop a theory of change of, of uh, programs. And we give this example for education program. It's actually the same. And it could be almost the same used for a big education project. So for example, if we have an education project that has um, maybe like that will be implemented for three years or five years, if it's like it has enough funding to do all the part, in, these, uh, in the inputs. So if the project uh, has awareness, has training, has uh, learning capacity building, it has like, uh, like um, infrastructure building or rehabilitation or furniture, equipment or so on. If it has some technical support in terms of systems and, and reporting and so on. 
So if it has all these uh, sections, then it could be linked and could be have like direct outputs, outcomes and impacts. So the theme theory of change for the education program could be applied and could be used for an education project. If, uh, just to give you an idea, like for example, the donors usually, uh, when they ask about uh, the logical framework, maybe if, I mean, uh, when they ask about the theory of change, maybe you could go to Google and try to find the theory of change and you will find it designed and, and um, designed on different shapes and, and different diagrams. Um, but the, maybe the, the best example, if you, if you go to Google and search for uh, DFID, uh, logical framework or theory, I mean, the, uh, the theory of change that is requested by DFID, DFID is Department for International Development or UK8. They usually, uh, like, just look at this. We have the problem, inputs, outputs, outcomes, impacts. The theme one is, it's still the theme. What I did is just, I, I made it longitudinal uh, instead of horizontal. So it's almost the same uh, theory of change. Usually for DFID or UK8, they, they ask you to provide a theory of change that is having the same sequence and the same, the, the same way. So it starts for, uh, by the problem, we write the problem like this, and then what are the inputs and how they are feeding into the outputs, how we come up with the outcomes and the impact. They should be all showed together in this diagram and we show the links to each other. So I, I hope by this, uh, uh, we, I could uh, like uh, clarify it even more like that the theory of change should be having like different diagrams. Uh, but this one is just a good example for what DFID or UK8 is asking for. Um, here in, in Portal, we developed this, uh, like how can we turn, how can we make the, 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 the problems three uh, uh, a logical framework. So for example, we, the, the, re, uh, the, the three routes, they are actually going to be the activities uh, and, and the three branches would be the outputs, the three leaves would be the outcomes, the three fruits would be the impact. Uh, and then uh, usually um, you, you will find out that uh, for every part, activities, outputs, outcomes and impacts, usually we have questions. Questions are actually the indicators. So the indicators are questions and we will talk more about them. But usually the indicator is a question that is, um, for example, we see uh, what is the number of students enrolled to schools? So we, we remove what what is and the, the indicator will become number of students enrolled to schools. That's the indicator. So the indicator is actually a question that has what this, this word is removed. And then we have the answer of the questions, we call it the target. And then we have means of verification or we could name it verification methods, which are the documents that has the answer. And then we have risks and assumptions. Usually for, for outcomes, outputs and activities, we have risks and assumptions, while, while for, uh, for the impact, usually it's not us. No one asks you to provide risk and assumptions for the, uh, the impact. Um, uh, like there are many details how we, we write the activities, how we write the outputs, how we write outcomes, how also we write the impact, and what, uh, like the relation of uh, indicators, how we develop indicator, means of verification and risk and assumptions. Um, usually, um, um, like there are different, like 13 way to, to write and to paraphrase or freeze uh, how to write the sentences related to each part of the logical framework. And because it, it has a lot of details, I prefer to, today just to give you the whole idea around the links between the, uh, between the different parts of the logical framework and the theory of change and also the, the problems tree. So we have the problems tree is, is becoming theory of change. And then the theory of change is becoming the logical framework. That's the, the logic sequence. And it should be like every part should feed into the same part, the, the related part. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, as I mentioned, at this level, I will not talk a lot about it.
Uh, also, I will be available if any one of you need to talk to me, please talk to me on LinkedIn. And then we can, we can uh, agree on uh, a specific time. We can talk and explain more and give you more ideas in your own language. Uh, like um, uh, maybe uh, if you have like some questions, maybe you could start uh, develop a logical framework in Portal 365. This will help us to give you a feedback and it will be much easier to write it in, in Portal 365. I will give you a, like, a, a, let's see, a live example by next week, how we develop a logical framework in, in Portal 365. In the same time, you can try it yourself. You add your proposal, you, you, you start uh, adding a logical framework, and then uh, come back to us, and, and we will be happy to answer uh, all of your questions. Uh, and thank you so much. Uh, um, I'm trying as much as possible to make it as short uh, as possible this, this week. So we don't, uh, because uh, you are actually in, most of you in, in holiday. So you could go back to your uh, holiday and uh, this will, will give you just like a kind of introduction to the logical framework, because I'm sure many of you will be confused and will, will need more time to practice, uh, to de develop the logical framework. And I hope this, this, I mean, this week will, will give you the, like the, the um, let's see the headlines and will give you more idea about the logic and sequence, as I mentioned from the uh, problems tree, the theory of change and the logical framework. Um, if anyone has a question, please, um, I will be happy to answer now. Uh, otherwise, I will, I, will be with, uh, I will be waiting for your questions on LinkedIn. You could you could post your question uh, for uh, like for everyone on the LinkedIn group, or also you could talk to me uh, in in, uh, in private message on LinkedIn, or also you could talk to me in in Portal 365. It has like a ma messages too. Thank you so much for your time, and I wish you a great and pleasant time. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you so much.